This is the first of 10 equations that do not look correct, but in some contexts are. The number e is normally approximated to 2.718. When we say e to the 1, we mean the number e multiplied once, which is still approximately 2.718. Now e to the 2 is multiplying e by itself, and this approximates to 7.389. Likewise, multiplying e 3 times gives 20.086, and multiplying e 4 times gives 54.598 approximately. So this is the question. What is e to the power of i times pi, where i is the square root of negative 1? Try to solve this question for yourself, and when you're ready, the answer is negative 1. This is known as Euler's identity. There are 9 more equations to go, starting with 0. At a point 9, followed by another 9, followed by another 9, and add as many 9s as you want all the way up to infinity. What is this number equal? Pause this video if you'd like to solve this for yourself, and when you're ready, the answer is 1. This is known as a recurring decimal and is an interesting exercise in basic algebra. Speaking of the number 1, let's start with the number 1, add a half to it, and on the denominator, add a half to that. On the new denominator, add a half to that, and keep going all the way until infinity. What does this number equal? This is known as a continued fraction, and if you've solved it, equals the square root of 2. Hint, you're going to need the quadratic equation. Speaking of square roots, let's start with the square root of pi, multiply the square root of pi to that, multiply the square root of pi in that, and keep going on all the way to infinity. What is the result of this nested square root? also known as nested radicals. The answer, surprisingly, is pi. Returning to the very first equation, let's suppose that e raised to the x power equals y. An equivalent way of expressing this is to take the natural logarithm and we say that the ln of y equals x. For instance, e raised to the 0 0.693 approximately equals 2. Therefore, we say that the ln of 2 approximately equals 0 0.693. Likewise, e raised to the 1.099 approximately equals 3. In this instance, we say that the ln of 3 approximately equals 1.099. Similarly, the ln of 4 approximately equals 1.386 and the ln of 5 approximately equals 1.609. This is the question, what is the ln of negative 1? On most calculators, this would give a math error, but in mathematics, this equals plus or minus i times pi. There are actually more solutions to this, which you can explore via complex logarithms. The star of complex analysis is i, known as the square root of negative 1. Just like before, i raised to the 1 means multiplying i once, i to the power of 2 means multiplying i twice, giving negative 1, multiplying i 3 times gives negative i, and multiplying i 4 times gives 1. Multiplying i a fifth time returns to i. Here is the strange question. What is i raised to the i-th power? You might even think that this number is a strange complex number, but this turns out to equal e raised to the negative of pi over 2. Technically, there are a few more answers, which you can explore via complex exponentials. Returning to less complex and more real ideas, 
Let's start with 1 divided by 1 times 2. Add 1 divided by 2 times 3. Add 1 divided by 3 times 4. So on and so forth. What does this equal? You might need to use some partial fractions and the telescoping series to help you. But the answer simplifies to 1. On this notion of infinite sums, let's start with the number 1, then subtract by 1, then add 1, subtract by 1, so on and so forth, continuing this alternating pattern. What does this equal? You might think that after the first term, the answer is just 1. After adding 2 terms, you get 0. After adding 3 terms, you get 1, 4 terms, you get 0, and therefore this sum does not have a finite value. But it turns out that this is known as the Grandi series, which has a very useful answer of 1 half. In this instance, this is also known as the Cesaro sum of the Grandi series. This next equation also has the number half, but before we get there, Let's start with the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. The number 1 times 2 is abbreviated by 2 factorial. This equals 2. The number 1 times 2 times 3 is abbreviated by 3 factorial, which equals 6. Likewise, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 is abbreviated by 4 factorial, which equals 24. So this is the question, what is half factorial? You might be surprised, but the answer is the square root of pi all divided by 2. This requires the use of the gamma function as well as the Gaussian integral, which are ideas in undergraduate mathematics. One more equation that blew my mind in undergraduate mathematics is the simplest equation you've ever learned. What is 1 plus 1 equal? You might have answered 2, but there are situations in which it makes sense that the answer is 0. This is featured in the finite field of two elements and might even have applications in electrical engineering and computer science via the study of Boolean algebra. Not only can equations be weird, but functions as well in the video here.